Well, the Lord be with you, dear saints. Thanks for joining us today. This is the Wednesday in the third week of Easter, the third Sunday of Easter. <clears throat> Please forgive my raspy voice. Our psalm, <clears throat> our psalm for today is Psalm 84, and we continue in the Gospel of St. Luke in chapter 7, 36 through the end of the chapter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hear the word of the psalm for today. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay up her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, even singing your praises. This encapsulates what we'll hear in Luke chapter 7, the end of the chapter today. When we recognize how far we are from God, when we recognize our sin, or better yet, when our conscience is so heavy upon us, we know we are broken and we hear you are forgiven and you're at peace with God because of Jesus. What's the result? Joy, jubilation. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. We can't stop showing our praise. And that's exactly what goes on every time the Spirit convicts us and then we confess and are forgiven. And it's exactly what's going on in the gospel reading for today. This is uh, Luke chapter 7, the end of the chapter. One of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him, and he went out into to the Pharisee's house and took his place at the table. And behold, a woman of the city who was a sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, and standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, Say it, teacher. A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I suppose, from whom he canceled the larger debt. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. And you gave me no kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But he who is forgiven little loves little. And he said to her, Your sins are forgiven. And those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Well, do you see the psalm right here in the midst of the gospel reading? A Pharisee, uh, an enemy of Jesus, if you will. The Pharisees were not favorable usually to Jesus. Uh, invites Jesus to his home, and this woman sees Jesus in there, and she comes up, and, and it must have been somewhat uncomfortable to see her pouring out herself at Jesus' feet. 
If you've ever been in a room with someone and they just, they have that ugly cry, they cry uncontrollably, it's really uncomfortable to see all of that emotion and people don't know what to do with that. And this woman comes in and she sees who Jesus is. She bows almost as like in an act of worship. She's crying because of her sin. This is, this is contrition. This is sorrow over her sin. And she cries and she washes Jesus' feet with her tears. She takes her hair and she wash or she wipes off Jesus' feet. She takes the ointment and she anoints his feet, if you will. And as she's doing all of this, she is joyful because she knows her forgiveness is there in front of her. She knows that as she does this, it's not the act of doing these things that, looks, that makes Jesus look at her favorably. It's her faith at the end of it. We heard those words. And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Not the act of doing, but the faith that clings to Jesus alone and cries out in contrition to him so that he will forgive. And then she receives that and lives in joy. Jesus uses an anal analogy to get to the Pharisee because he, he might still be thick. He isn't understanding this. Two men, one owes 50 denarii, one 500. Uh, a, a, an average wage for a person was one denarii a day. So one man owed him about a little over two months' wages. The other man owed him a year and a half's wages. And neither could pay. And, G and the, the man in the parable just forgives both. Who would love him more is the question. And of course, you know the answer as well as I do. The one who had the greater debt would seem to love him more. Now when Jesus says this, you can think that the Pharisee was putting this together, that the woman here, and it calls her a sinner, which is not a light term, probably a prostitute, and she is there in front of Jesus, and everyone knows her sin. And the Pharisee is more than likely somewhat of an upright man in his community, pious and religious looking, wouldn't have anything to do with that woman, especially in his home, if it weren't for Jesus. And yet she comes and cries at his feet. And the Pharisee didn't offer Jesus anything really other than just coming in and eating. Do you see the, do you see the polarity here? The one with the greater sin, the woman who knew her life and knew Jesus, begged, cried at his feet, and he forgave her. And the Pharisee was more interested in answers than in forgiveness. When you come to church or people come to church at Divine Shepherd and we hear God's word preached to us, oftentimes people will meet me in the back and they'll say, Pastor, that was, I needed to hear that. That was a great sermon. And usually what happens in those things is there was something in that sermon, some part of the law that spoke to them, some part of the law that convicted them of the sin that they're struggling with. And then once they hear that law and they're convicted, they're like the woman, they're so broken, but yet at the same time they hear the law, just after that they hear the gospel, that Jesus has died for that sin, that he has died for you. That in this parable, if your sin is convicting you like the woman's, Jesus forgives the woman and he has forgiven you. Jesus has come to us to take our sin, all of it, upon himself and give us his holiness. And the one that affects the most is the one whose sin is right in front of them. And they hear it and they rejoice because God has forgiven their sins. I have a good friend of mine, a pastor, and he says, when we preach generic preaching, generic law means generic gospel, but specific law that gets to the heart of our sins leads to a specific Savior that forgives our sins, a Jesus that went to the cross and endured scorning and shame and even death in order that you, dear child of God, would be forgiven. What a great gift that is. 
We maybe don't have ointment to anoint Jesus' feet, but we let our praises sing just like we heard in the psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. I can't wait to be in God's house to hear his words of gospel wash over me and forgive me of my sins. That is the great hope that we see in the end of Luke chapter 7. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as we go to the catechetical review again today, and we talk about the forgiveness of sins, we have to be in the second article of the Apostles' Creed. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, and lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true, we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that as we come into your house with hearts heavy with our own sin, you meet us, Father, with our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we cry and let our tears come before your altar, you meet us with gospel hope and forgiveness, the announcement of absolution upon us that our sins are forgiven because of Christ our Lord. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for loving us and forgiving us. Hear us now as we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed, alleluia. Thanks for joining us today, dear saints. I'll join you again tomorrow. Go in his peace.